Okay, so in this problem, we're using a z table to find a critical z alpha divided by a 2 value. So we're trying to find a z alpha divided by 2 value using a z table. All right, so our technique to do this then is pretty simple. We're going to use a z table like this one. This z table is not the same as every z table you can find. They're all different a little bit. Um, there's probably maybe at least uh, three or four that I've seen commonly used. But this table is maybe the most common one. And the way it works is very simple. It has a drawing here in the upper left hand corner. It's showing that when you look up a z score on this table, you do the area from that line to the center. The other thing, um, or the other way the table can be used, is you can look up an area in the body of the table, and that will correspond to this area here, and that will give you the corresponding z-score that's related to that area. And the z-score is found on this left column and this top row, using the two pieces together to come up with the z-score. So we're going to use this kind of a z-table in order to find this critical z-alpha divided by 2 value. And we're going to do it most efficiently by using these four steps. So with this kind of a table, these four steps do this process the most efficient way. All right, so what we're going to do then is pretty simple. According to the steps, we're going to identify the confidence level. So in this case, we're trying to find that z alpha divided by 2 value for a 95% confidence interval. So with 95% as our confidence level, I'm just going to write down that our confidence level is equal to 0.95. So I write it as a decimal. The next step in the process is going to be to take that confidence level and I want to divide it in half. So I'm just going to take half of 95. So 0.95 divided in half and that will give you 0 0.4750. Alright, so once you've divided 95% in half, you end up with 47.50% or 4750 if you divide 0.95 in half. Okay, so we have this value, and that was our, essentially, step two of the process, to divide the confidence level in half. Now, all we do is we go to our table and we look this value up, and that value will correspond to our z alpha divided by 2, the value we're looking for. So this critical z value is going to be found by looking up this 4750 in the body of the table. And that's going to be associated with the proper z-score for the problem. All right, so let's go get our z-table and take a look at that. Okay, so there's our z-table now. And what we're going to do is we're going to look up the 4750 that we were supposed to look up, but in the body of the table. The most efficient way to do this is to actually start in the leftmost column and work our way down until we come near 4750. So I'm going to kind of scroll down here visually until I see something near it. Like for example, this is 31.59%. We want to go down until we see 4750 or something nearby that. So as I scroll down, I'm just going to move the table up here a little bit so we get in the vicinity. And it looks like when I do that, I end up near this 1.9 row, right? You see that in next to the 1.9 row, we see 4713. And then, you know, beneath that, there's the 2.0 row, which has 4772. Well, 4713 and 4772 are surrounding our desired number of 4750, right? So maybe 4750 is somewhere in this row. So I'm going to scroll across until I see something close to 4750, or if I can find it directly, then I'll take that number. So there it is. There's 4750. It doesn't often, um, the number you're looking up doesn't often show up right in the table perfectly like this. A lot of times you get you have to go with the closest number to the number you're looking for. But in this case, 4750 shows up perfectly. And so we can see that it's in the 1.9 row, correct? 1.9 row. And then if we go all the way to the top, we can see that it's actually the 1.96 value that's connected to 4750 here. So it's 1.9 and then 6. So 1.96 is our critical Z value. Okay, so we found our answer. Our answer from the table is 1.96. So that is your Z alpha divided by 2 value. And that was the method that you use when you're using a Z table to find this critical Z value. In our next videos, we're going to start to look at how a T table can be used to do the same thing. Here we were demonstrating a Z table. We're going to see how a T table can do the same thing.